Hey guys, Josh here from Sportitude Running and it's your review time and today we're going to be talking all things ASICS Gel Kayano 28. This shoe here has just landed in our warehouse mid part of 2021 and with like all of my shoe reviews we're going to dive into all of the changes with the 28 from the 27, profile the foot type that should be considering this shoe, break it down from the outsole, the midsole and the upper, give you all the information you need at home to who knows potentially throw this into your shoe rotation. So without further ado, let's get stuck in. Okay guys, before we get stuck into the engineering of the Kayona 28, let's just profile the foot type that could be considering that shoe. So we are talking about someone who overpronates. So what that essentially means is when they go through their gait cycle, their arches will splay out ever so slightly. So what we mean by that is when you make contact with the ground, you come through your mid stance phase, you will see that the arch will flatten out as so, and you'll see a little bit of bias towards that medial side. So what ASICs have done and what they've done for a number of years, they use an arch support on that medial side just to give a little bit of extra support and structure for that foot going through to their toe off face. Okay guys, here's the fun part. Let's talk about the Kayano 28. So um, like they have done in the past, ASICs sent me a pair of Kayanos and I put in around about 30 Ks in this shoe here. So what I have experienced straight off the bat is it's noticeably softer and it's noticeably more flexible. And the reason behind those two major differences is to do with what they have done and changed within this shoe. So first thing we'll do, we'll talk about the outsole. So probably one of my favorite changes with the Kayana 28 is the fact they've gone to full ground contact. So we've seen this trend um, across the industry, no matter what brand, for probably three to four years plus now. So more brands are opting to offer rubber the whole way through the sole of the shoe. And the main reason being is it does actually provide a slightly smoother transition and it does provide a little bit more protection for the asset. And in a shoe like this, the asset is the cushioning. So at the back of the shoe through here, we have a slightly harder, more durable uh, rubber, uh, which is in play. Now, the main reason being is this shoe is designed or targeted towards more heel strikers. So you need a little bit more protection underneath the foot in that first purchase of the ground. Now, as you come through to the mid stance phase, and this is where I'll hold up the Kayano 27 in my left hand here, you can see the biggest change is this trustic system. So this trustic system has been on play with the ASICS Kayano for uh, ever, ever and a day. So ever since the first model, they had a form of trustic underneath the foot. And for as long as I can remember, and we're talking about 16 years in the game now, ASICS Kayano have offered a trussic system within their shoe. So that's just essentially providing a, a little bit more of a rigid supportive system as you go through that mid stance phase, your gait cycle, essentially splitting the heel engineering and the forefoot engineering. In the 28, it is still on play. They still have that trussic system. However, it's just tucked underneath a little bit of cushioning being the flight foam um, cushioning system and also the outsole. So it's a great way to offer that structure and support, but also by protecting and providing that smooth transition with full ground contact with the rubber. It's a great little change and I like what they've done there. Okay guys, now let's talk all things midsole. Now, if you've been a Kayana wear for um, one year, two years or a number of years, you'd know that the magic in the Kayona happens underneath the foot. It's a max cushioned, high mileage shoe with arch support on the medial side. And ASICs have not changed that with the 28. The couple of changes they have made is the it's, it's to do with the stack height. So in the 28, we've just gone up well, one millimeter from the 27. So it's next to negligible in regards to the change. You've got 23 mil heel and a 13 mil forefoot for a variance of 10 mil heel to toe drop in the men's. In the ladies, which I hold right here, we have a 25 mil heel and a 12 mil forefoot for a variance of 13 millimeters heel to toe drop. And in comparison to last year's Kayano 27s, that was one mil, uh, one mil has been added, pardon me. Now you might um, be sort of wondering at home, why do they do a high heel to toe drop in the ladies? versus the men's. Now, ASICS is probably one of the brands that's more researched um, dependent. So they do obviously, like all brands, I shouldn't say that no brands don't do research, but ASICS um, have obviously identified for a max cushioned shoe that requires some arch support. Ladies have a tendency to strike the ground ever so slightly differently than men's, and we're talking about on average here. So by increasing the stack height, it's gonna provide a 
um, a increase in the heel to toe drop, pardon me, is going to provide a little bit more structure and support and integrity to the midsole over the duration of the life of the shoe. So um, they've done it now for a few years. They have also been doing it in the Nimbus for a number of years too. And I kind of like that. I like it when a brand does call out those key changes um, from one gender to the next. It's not like they have a cookie cutter approach from one model men's and one model women's and they just alter the widths. As you obviously identify, there is a need for that, um, for that change and that is why they have done it previously and that is probably why they'll continue to do it going forward. Now talking about the midsole, let's dive into what's happening underneath the foot. So. On the medial side three here, we've got the ASICS Dynamic Duo Max Arch Support, and that's um, placed uh, in between my sort of fingers through here on that blue foam. So that is that dual density arch support system, which has been strategically placed through that mid stance phase of the gait cycle to provide the arch a little bit more support as it transitioned. As we talk about the midsole now, we're talking about um, a couple of densities of foam. Now that's pretty consistent with ASICs. They do tend to do that with um, the Kayanos. They wedge in the gel cushioning system between two densities of foam. So on the 20, or in the 28s, pardon me, through the forefoot we have the Flight Foam Blast cushioning system, and that's highlighted with that orange foam. And then when you look at the blue foam, that's just their patented Flight Foam technology. So the Flight Foam Blast, pardon me, is a little bit softer underneath the foot and the flight foam in this instance is a wee bit firmer and in between it as I touched on a minute ago you've got your gel cushioning through the heel and underneath the forefoot under your first metatarsal there is that strategically placed twist gel as well. Now that twist gel isn't there to provide cushioning it's there to provide support for that first metatarsal. As let's get talking all things upper. So we're talking about a shoe that is max cushioned and it's designed for mileage running so what that means is it's going to be spending plenty of minutes and hours out in the road over the duration of its life. So that could obviously vary depending on the runner. It might be 30 minutes for someone, but it might be 90 plus for someone else. So when you're talking about that amount of time out on the road, we need to consider comfort and obviously breathability as well as support. So the engineered mesh, which is on offer in the Kona 28, it was also on offer in the 26 and the 27 through the forefoot. All they have really done is ever so slightly changed the fit of the forefoot toe box. So it's kind of hard to see at home, but the 27 had a little bit more of a tapered feel through the forefoot. I personally found this nice and comfortable. I did not have any issues whatsoever with how the 27 fit on uh, uh, fit through the forefoot. If anything, I did not notice the forefoot at all. And sometimes when you don't notice something, it's a good thing. So the forefoot of the 28 was breathable. It was high enough, had enough depth and enough width on offer in my standard nine USD width in this shoe. It fitted well, it was true to size, which is fantastic. As you're coming through to the midsection of the Kayana with regards to the upper, around the navicular through here, I personally feel like I've got a slightly better lockdown and that's just me being subjective because again, I liked what this shoe did for me, the 27 around my arch. I personally find that the fit of this sort of guy just to be a little bit more premium up top as well. So it just felt like I was nice and secure around the arch. Then as we transition back to the heel of this shoe, this is probably where most of the change has occurred with the upper. So over the last almost 10 years now, ASICs have been rolling an external heel counter and it started with a clutch collar, um, if we're going back to the Kona 18. And over, that, over the last nearly 10 years, they've obviously altered the engineering of that shoe. But the external heel counter was a great way to get more of a customized fit for the runner but still offer the support um, which you require at the back. So the k 27 has that plastic system that which runs around the back of the heel counter. If you look at the 28, it looks like there is no external heel counter, but what ASICs have done is they've just dropped it a little bit lower and the external heel counter runs around the base of your heel calcaneus and it goes around to the lateral side through here. A little bit higher on the medial side, so in theory there, this shoe is designed for an overpronator, so you kind of want to build up the walls a little bit on that medial side, which is exactly what that external heel counter does. But the internal heel counter, which is the plastic structure within this foam region, is, in my opinion, perfect. It's in the right height, the right support, and in conjunction with the memory foam and the lining on the inside, I found this shoe to fit absolutely perfectly around the back of my heel. 
Great thing for me personally is I didn't actually have to use a lock lay. Sometimes I do um, from time to time, depending on the shoe, depending on the model. All I did was I just went back to my last eyelet. So I skipped the second last hole, went back to the last, and I got the exact dialed in fit that I liked with this shoe. Last but not least, when we're talking about uppers, we need to dial in on the widths as well. So when we're looking at a men's Kayano, we've got three widths on offer. D, which is standard, 2E, and then a 4E, which is their widest offering. In the ladies, we have two widths, a B, which is standard, and then a D as well, which is their widest width on offer here in Australia. The other thing to note, of course, is not every single color comes in every single width. So um, ASICs Australia do a very good job with regards to selecting the models that they would like to carry in widths, and they specifically bring them into the country to cater for you, the running community out there. Okay guys, in summary, the ASICS Gel Kayano 28 is a great update in my opinion. So the 30 kilometers I have done in this shoe so far, it is lighter, it's softer and it's smoother. So I cannot fault how it has performed straight out of the box. I didn't have to wear it in, it felt great on the foot, the fit's fantastic, it's true to size, so if you happen to be a specific size in this shoe previously and the width, you will be the same in the current Kayano 28. Now, being a high mileage max cushion shoe with arch support, uh, the other models that you could potentially be considering in this space is a couple of shoes like the Glycerin GTS, which is from your Brooks range. The other ones to consider would be the Horizon from Mizuno, the Arahi or the Gaviota from Hoka, a couple of models there, and also the Saucony Hurricane previously. Now, I do believe that shoe is going to be having a bit of a change going forward, but you happen to be a Saucony Hurricane runner. This is a shoe that sort of fits into that same category. So there you have it. Thank you very much for watching the ASIC Show Kayano 28. If you've got any questions, comments, theories or queries about this shoe, drop it in the comment section below. If you haven't subscribed to our channel, please hit the red subscribe button, stay notified, and we'll continue to pump out as many of these shoe reviews for you, the running community out there. And until next time, stay safe, be kind to one another, happy running, and we'll see you out in the road. Take care.